Prokofiev really was a crazy composer. He had lots of crazy ideas, and one of them was to set war and peace to music. Now imagine War and Peace, this huge novel in four volumes. And in 1942, of course, the war is all around and the opera becomes a national project because it's an opera about the war by the greatest novelist, Leo Tolstoy. And the Minister of Culture approaches Prokofiev and asks him to make certain changes in the opera, to make it into a grander, more monumental and more patriotic statement. Prokofiev, when he writes this opera in the 40s in Soviet Russia, is viewed as a recent emigre because he spent the previous 15 years of his life abroad. And he is not trusted very much. So this is why various officials and bureaucrats want to bring him in and kind of instill this ideology into him. Because they know that he's a wonderful composer, but they also want him to project the correct message, especially in an opera which is so important. It's almost like a national treasure before it's even written. has to say yes and uh, this becomes a collaboration it's really amazing that there were people telling Prokofiev simply what to do with a particular musical theme and he listens to them and makes these changes it's really incredible because he's asked to add this scene and that scene the opera starts growing and becomes almost unperformable in one evening yeah so they divide it into two and the first half is premiered uh, during his lifetime the second is never premiered du during his lifetime so he never gets to see the whole thing and in fact there is no uh, complete version that he left to us because he died before it was in any way finalized and then there's a question well who was right because very often they are towards uh, with each other this composer of genius on the one hand and these bureaucrats who don't know quite so much about music, but they know about the ideological message that they want to put across. And actually the answer to this question is not as obvious as you think.